In this video, I'll be using Premiere Pro to create a video time lapse from still images captured with the GoPro Hero 8 camera. However, this video tutorial would work on any still images captured with any camera as long as they're in numeric sequence. All right, so we're going to select a new project, give our project a name. And then we're going to select in the media bin with our right mouse. We will select new item, new sequence. Um, you'll want to choose a sequence that aligns with any other video clips that you'll be adding into this timeline in addition to the time lapse. So if everything that you've recorded has been 30 frames per second uh, and then you have this time lapse of still images, you'd want to like create your project in 30 frames per second to match your other footage. So we'll select OK. And by the way, when I say footage, I mean the video files, which are just bits of ones and zeros because footage implies film where there's like a roll of film and you're measuring how many feet there are. Um, in terms of importing the images, uh, one thing to keep in mind, if we go into edit preferences and then media, we have indeterminate media time base. So if you have 30 frames per second selected here, when we import our images into this video, it will come in at 30 frames per second. Um, if we wanted it to be at 24 frames per second, we would select that, or 23.976 frames, we would select that, and then 29.97, you can choose drop frame, non-drop frame, uh, you know, pick whatever. Let's do that one, drop frame. No, let's do non-drop frame, I don't know. Frame count, start at zero, select okay. All right, so there you go. So now we have a sequence in there, 29.97 frames per second. Uh, we selected that sequence to be at 1080p. If we go in and take a look at that here, uh, sequence settings, let's see here, sequence settings. So we have DSLRs, the editing mode, 29.97 frames per second, 1920 by 1080. Although our images are really large, uh, we're going to do a 1080p video, or 1920 by 1080, because that way we can kind of pan around in the image. Right, so now we're going to right click in our media bin and select import. Uh, navigate to the folder where all, where all of your still images are located. Select the first image. It will say image sequence and then you would select open. So you don't need to select all of the images, just the first image and then select open. And then we can see here we have image sequence 29.97 frames per second, which matches up with our sequence nicely. And it says here media duration is one minute and 46 seconds. Um, now, if you had one file out of your thousands of files that was missing, uh, your duration would be shorter because we're, this will only count up to the point where a file ends. So if you went from file number 0001 to 2000, but somewhere around file number 1500, you ended up missing a file. So you went from 1500 to 1502. It would only import the first 1500 files because you're missing file 1501. If that should occur to you, you would need to find some file renaming software, such as uh, bulk rename here is software that I use. It's about $100. Do a Google search for bulk rename utility, uh, and then you will find that. Uh, but that comes in useful if you need to mass rename a whole bunch of files. I probably will create another video separate than this one about how to use that utility for that purpose. Um, all right, so now we have our image sequence and our images. So all we need to do is drag them into the timeline, into the video timeline. Uh, you will get a warning. The clip does not match the sequence settings. Change the sequence to match the clip settings. And in this case, I want to keep the existing settings. If we select change sequence settings, it will be a square weird format to match the, the image file size, which we don't want. We want to keep our 1920 by 1080 video. So we can see here that our image is kind of square. So we're going to need to mess around with that. Uh, make sure you're set this to fit so you can see the entire window, including the black bars. Um, if you make the mistake of zooming into 100% or some weird percentage, then you might kind of like be missing part of the file, like you might not see the whole thing. So I would suggest selecting fit nonetheless. And that would be what we want to do. 
So now we're going to go here into our timeline. Uh, because we Im imported it this way, this is just treated like any other video file that you normally use. So you can do all of your keyframing as of all of those images. In this case, like 3,000 images. They can all be edited just like as one file and keyframed. Um, there are some methods of doing this differently in Premiere Pro where you're selecting and importing 3,000 files and each file you select before import that they have a duration of one frame and then that would kind of like put all the files there too. I don't like that because then down here in your bin you have not only your normal video files that you're dealing with but then you have 3,000 individual still image files to deal with uh, and then you have to group them and it becomes more of a problem I think in terms of keyframing and just general management of files. So here we can go to the beginning of the file. We want to create some interest. So we want to make sure to scale this up so we don't have any bars. So let's start at 55, drop a position and a scale keyframe at the beginning. Um, let's go somewhere about into the middle of the file and do a little bit of zoom and a little bit of different positioning. Oops. Just dragging down here, do, 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 up into the sky, too far into the sky. We'll go to about right there. Uh, then we're going to copy those keyframes by dragging our mouse around them. Now they're highlighted. Right clicking, select copy. Move over a little bit, right click and select paste. So now we're holding that position for a few seconds. And then as we get to the daylight, we're going to go backwards. And scroll back down or pan down. Gonna get this lined in the center of these two arbovitae trees so we have a kind of a center grid line or marker there so that's well where we'll end up but we'll highlight those and drag those to the far right because a pet peeve of mine is when we go to the far right with this cursor it just disappears like to me it's like when i move this here the image should not go to black i should still be on the image i should be in the last frame of the image by default I don't know why Adobe Premiere does that to us. Uh, it just seems dumb to me that that should happen. But that's the fight that we have. All right, so that's basically it for the sequence. And then now I'll want to go to our folder if you have some music and other things you want to do in there. So here I'm just going to do a time lapse. I'm not adding any other video files. But I want to add this music to the track. So we'll go apply default transitions to the end of the music so it fades out. We'll apply the default transition to the end of the file, video file. Do the same here. We're right clicking, selecting apply default transition, right clicking, selecting default transition. And that is basically it. So just Ideally, you'd want to do a preview of this. Um, there's so many times I've rendered videos and then watched them back and then found the first mistake. So you can maybe prevent that by playing it back in your timeline first to make sure you don't have a mistake. I'm going to hit stop on that. So let's assume that that was all fine. Um, now I'm going to take a look here quick and see that there's like a little bit of noise. Um, how to get rid of noise would probably be a separate topic. But I'm going to go to a spot in the video where I see a lot of noise. And I have uh, purchased an effect that is called Neat Video. It's like a noise reduction software. So I'm going to apply that to the sequence. And here we can see in our effect controls, we have that in there. Um, so create, uh, so we really want to denoise the whole thing, I think. Well, we could probably just do the sky, but it like, would be too much work. Let's just go ahead and drag this denoise thing way out to here. 
Drag it way out to here. Something tells me I'm not being very efficient with this. My computer is saying it needs to work hard. Get that in there. All right, so we have that all selected. So let's select prepare. Now probably if we were really not lazy like I am, we probably should really just denoise the sky, the part that has noise and not these shadowy areas maybe, but probably creating more work for the processor. So we select prepare and we're gonna select build. And ooh, too many error errors. Disabling GeForce 1080, so something's not liking that. We're gonna close that and hope for the best. Um, select auto profile. That didn't work too well. Let's draw our sky up here because there's like a lot of noise up there. Uh, and then select build profile. I'm happy with that. I don't know if I'm all that happy with that. Build profile moist noisy frame. Hmm. Ooh, look at that. That I kind of liked. I still see some noise down here, but man, did it like, well, this is the sample area, so you can't pay attention down here. We have to look at this like little area right here, um, but I actually like that. So the generic profile seemed to be the one that like did the best. You can even see down here how it's kind of cleaning up. It's not doing very good with Y, but these other two colors, yeah, sure. So let's just go with that for now, because this video is about time lapses, not about noise reduction. So if you want to find out more about a neat video, perhaps look on YouTube for neat video, uh, and then you will find some other videos created about how to use that software. Uh, the people are probably more advanced than I am in its use. All right, so we've selected that. Uh, I think I'm ready now. So let's go ahead and do file, save, uh, just in case during rendering our computer crashes. We don't want to lose the work that we've done, although it's not taking us too long. But, so let's do file, export, media. This is another like quirk of Adobe Premiere Pro. And I don't really know what the deal is with this, but I've kind of found that at times it doesn't really want to do what I want it to do. So let's click off that frame, click down over here to the timeline, click the image or the sequence, and let's see if we can give it another go. File, export, media. Now it works. So there was just some quirk in Adobe sometimes where it does not want to show me the rendering area. I cannot export, and then I have to click on something else in Adobe or switch from the editing frame to effects frame or click in the video timeline, and then I can go to where I want to go. Um, all right, so I've got that in there, sequence one. I'm going to select to just go with a basic YouTube 1080p full HD. I'm not too worried about quality for the purposes of this rendering job. I think this will probably be fine. Um, it's not the highest quality video to begin with uh, in terms of the capture of the images. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and now we could select export or we could select queue. Let's select export and see how long this takes. I'm thinking it's going to take a while because of the noise reduction. If it was not for the noise reduction, uh, this probably would have taken a couple of minutes. So I think it's going to work really hard to do that noise reduction. So at this point, we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. I'll let that render for the next 54 minutes and I will show the video outcome right now.
So that's how you can make a time lapse in Adobe Premiere with images captured on your GoPro Hero 8 or other camera. But could we have done a better job? The answer to that is yes if we had used the raw images from the GoPro camera. So make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be showing in the future how to use LRT time lapse in combination with Adobe Lightroom to make a higher quality, higher resolution version of the time lapse that we just illustrated in this video. Mm -hmm.